Peggy Hickman was raised in a loving, close-knit family, but it was the unbreakable bond she shared with her father that comforted her most and gave her strength as she grew into a young woman. Fatefully, that bond would be cut short by his early passing, changing the course of Peggy's life forever. For more than 20 years, Peggy has been living with schizophrenia, a condition that causes her to hear a voice, one that taunts and teases her about her late father. After years of enduring this horrible torment, one day her doctor proposed a non-traditional coping tool. He asked me if I had ever thought of running, and it was like, I'm thinking to myself, really? Like, I'm almost 57 years old at the time. Um, I've never run in my life before, and eight months ago I had open heart surgery. Like, I thought, this guy's really off his rocker, like, so, but I thought, well, I, you know, just to appease him, I said, okay, I'll try it, like, you know, so I did. I, uh, I uh, tried it, I went to the running room, and uh, I tried it, and, you know, I say, it was love at first step. I, I loved it, and uh, I've never looked back, so, uh, yeah. Running has proved to be Peggy's true passion. It's given her the confidence and peace she has been searching for, and she now uses running as a vehicle for advocacy, education, and raising funds for schizophrenia. From the love of running came another passion, which was advocating for uh, uh, people with schizophrenia and uh, trying to bring awareness to the illness itself. Uh, and I have a message that, you know, I use every year in my, in my fundraising for Race Weekend, I fundraise, and uh, my message is the same every year, you know, about uh, that education is the key to understanding. Running gives me a confidence that I don't get anywhere else in my life. I, when I'm running, I'm, I feel totally confident. I, when I'm running, I don't feel ill. I, when I'm running, I can, I figured out when I'm running that uh, when my voice decides that he would like to join me in a run, I figured out that I can run faster than him and uh, <laughs> so unless he can catch up with me, he has to wait until my run is finished. So yeah, run gives me a piece, uh, brings me a piece that uh, I desperately need. So yeah, I love it, I love it. The Army run this past fall, it, it was hot again. And race weekend was extremely hot. I have a really hard time running in the heat. I'm not a lover of the heat. So when, it's, when the temperature goes above zero, it's like it's too hot for me. So, uh, but got through race weekend okay. Then the Army run came and it was hot again. And I don't know, a lot of people seem to, to uh, find uh, the Army run a little more difficult heat-wise than race weekend for some reason this year, but uh, during, uh, during the Army run, my voice decided he was going to make his presence known. And for some reason, I couldn't outrun him that day. I couldn't outrun him and he was running with me and, and totally, um, getting into my head I couldn't I couldn't shake him and um, ended up stopping uh, uh, stopped a police officer to ask if I could use his phone to try to get a hold of my husband and he didn't have a phone uh, for me to use and and I kept so I just kept going and um, yeah, the race wasn't pleasant. I didn't know what to do. Uh, he, he kept telling me that everyone was laughing at me, that I need to get off the course, that, you know, everybody was laughing. And, and, but I had nowhere to go. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, like, I wasn't thinking clearly at that point, and I didn't know what to do at all. Um, I finally sat down on the curb, which is sitting there crying and crying. Like, and uh, then I heard my name and it startled me because I thought, you know, but it was a husband of one of the girls I run with and uh, he, uh, he sat with me for a while and uh, told me to, you know, just stay with him and we will wait for his wife who was coming up. She was having a difficult run physically and why don't I wait for her and, you know. So I sat there with him, which was really comforting and then when she arrived, uh, it was, um, it was almost like that took my focus off of my voice and it was like all of a sudden I wanted to help her like you know so her and I finished the run we said we're going to finish this run 
the two of us together. We don't care how long it takes us. And uh, we did, we finished the run. It was an awful, awful run, but we finished it. And uh, just before we got to the finish line, we could see the cameraman at the finish line. And uh, we, so we both kind of stopped and uh, <laughs> freshened ourselves up a little bit and put, it was totally a fake picture coming across the finish line. We were smiling and, and that was the last thing we were really doing, but it, uh, it was really nice. It was really nice to finish with somebody. So. Peggy has since created a running group called Run With It that addresses social inclusion, stigma, and barriers to wellness, has made numerous TV and radio appearances debunking myths about schizophrenia and raised thousands of dollars for the schizophrenia program at the Royal. It's not the illness that defines Peggy Hickman, it's what she does in spite of it.